I was told when I got up on top here, I'd be in an apple orchard, and I'm in an apple orchard. The apples are way up on top of that tree right there. Kind of hard to get to them. And the one that I did get to, there's an example of it, not too big, and they're still very, very green. So, not too, not too tasty. Boy, Nate, I just took a bite and it's already turning brown. That's weird. I don't know what I was growing in it. Yeah. Not, not what I'd call a great apple. But, I did get one, so I'll say I did. Um, oh, there's some. They're even smaller. If you, uh, you got to maintain apple orchard to get apples big enough to bear, you got to come out and cull them out. Or you get so much fruit that the tree puts all this energy into multiple fruits. I mean, that thing's just covered up with them. But... Instead of big fruits, you just get a bunch of little fruits. Anyhow, should be coming into some fields. Uh, I have determined I'm going to have a water issue. This is a pretty dry section, not a lot of water sources to begin with, and nothing that I've seen at all from my last water source, which was six-tenths of a mile from rice shelter rice field shelter so that means i'm gonna get me another one before i get out of here and see if these greenings are any better maybe this is a different variety um so it's 12 miles section in here where there's absolutely no water source at all and i ain't even got to the one water source the next one, which is from my point right now, is seven and a half miles. And I'm down to uh, about three quarters of a liter of water. So that's going to be an issue because it's hot. And so, you know, what do you do? Do you just drink it and then, like you normally would, and then that last section to get to the water you just dry or do you try to conserve i got this feeling that i'm not gonna make seven and a half miles as hot and muggy as it is with uh with three quarters of a liter of water so we'll be parched time i get there i threw about eight ounces away because when I was back at the rice shelter field where I camped and that was stupid but that was PPP piss poor planning I didn't look and see what the next water source was because there's always water sources on the AT right so lesson learned there plan look ahead before you pour your water out I had to stop six tenths of a mile before I got to Rice Field and get two liters in my dirty water Seenock bag and haul it up. Everything was up pretty much yesterday. Haul it up to the campsite and I arrived there with a little better than a liter that it in of clean water and of course the two liters in my sea knot that I hauled and I didn't get into that till this morning so I should have looked ahead and I would have been dang sure not poured any out and carried, carried what I had but I didn't so I'm going to have to deal with what I got doesn't mean a death sentence this means a discomfort sentence so we'll see all right, that is still going through this neat little orchard. A couple fields coming in through here. There's a lot of campsites coming up, but they're all dry. 
which means you would have had to haul water a long, long, long ways. So this whole section in here is pretty, pretty dang dry from once you hit the woods there at Parisburg with the exception of that one stream until you get on in you know, the next 12 miles, like I said. So, all right, we'll catch back up with you down trail. For me, things like this are what I think paradise might be like, maybe even the Garden of Eden without all the ugliness that's out there. If, it was, if the ugliness wasn't there, that'd be what the Garden of Eden may look like. What if it was, and this was the tree of good and evil, or the tree of knowledge, whatever you believe it's called. That was the fruit you weren't supposed to eat. I can tell you one thing, it don't taste very good. I can imagine when Adam and Eve were eating that fruit, did it taste good? I don't know, I think we're still, still got the ramifications of those going on and it don't taste good from that original fruit. But anyway, for me, this is my paradise. This is just awesome see the views and stuff somebody's been bush hogging this keeping it up there's a lot of up on top there there was a lot of random bush hogging that they had done just all of a sudden you see a random spot that they had come back in there with a bush hog but anyway whoever did it appreciate it because it sure is a lot prettier instead of having to walk through bushwhack through that Well, I got to tell you, not one of my favorite sections. These roots, these rocks, oh crap, these rocks are killer on my plantar fasciitis, but they're just killer in general if I didn't have that. Can't make any time because you got to pick your way through them. And most of the time, of course, right when I go to film, I come on some dirt. But most of the time, I'm not having any dirt. It's all them cotton picking rocks like you saw back there. And shoot, you just can't make time picking your way through that. You gotta figure out, gotta make sure you're on one that's stable so you don't turn your ankle. And you gotta make sure you don't step on one that's sticking straight up, a punji rock, to kill your arch. Or run up beside your ankle, peel the meat off of it. <sighs> Anyhow, this section's been slammed full of it. Can't say that's enjoyable. All right, I'll quit my moaning and griping and whining. Get back to hiking now that I got some dirt. Well, at least I'm coming in through here when everything's dry. You can't see the trail of the rocks. And another thing is, what were those? Popper, popper trees? Yeah, popper, tulip, popper. Anyway, at least. A lot of times you go through there and there'll be some poison ivy like that. So if you're allergic to that, you got to watch it. You got to catch every one of them to move them out of the way with your tracking poles. Wear long sleeve shirts and gloves or something. But yeah, so that's kind of a how the canopy gets, I mean, how the trail gets canopied over at chest level sometimes. Most of the time it's at feet level. All right, I have made it to my destination for the night, and that is Bailey's Gap Shelter. Um, I might have told this camera with both hands, and I apologize for the shake, but I am war slap out. It was a 16.4 today, and <laughs> a lot, a lot of uphill. A lot of fighting rocks. 
and grown over trail. So, but I decided to push it on here. It really, the shelter before this was War Spur Shelter, and this was only another four miles. So I got, I had plenty of daylight. Uh, so, I mean, I just decided to go ahead and do it. And another thing is that sets me up for a 17.8. Day was 16.4. That sets me up for 17.8 tomorrow. 17.8 tomorrow puts me at the truck, which puts me home and flush toilet and shower and my wife and warm bed and my doggy and my kitty cats. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to push that tomorrow. I got incentive. It's going to be, you know, another 1.4 miles, but I got incentive to do it. And one thing today I had, I was like three tents. I uh, had a double load of water. So my normal two liters plus another two liters because there's no water here at this shelter. Uh, there's supposed to be a water source, but Gut Hook says it's not in operation. And I'm going to look around for it maybe tomorrow. So I can post a, um, not Gut Hook's far out. So I can post a, something on there, let people know. But I went ahead and stopped at a place that was great water source it's a tenth of a mile straight down and a tenth of a mile straight back up to get to the trail and then you're toting an extra two liters of water plus whatever you uh filtered while you were down there at the source so carrying four liters of water what is that almost 10 pounds right there just in water anyway that is the plan um i think i'll, I'll do one more video before it's lights out um looks like i'm gonna be here by myself tonight so won't be bothering anybody and i'll do one more recap for the day and then that'll be it for this portion of uh the virginia hike okay talk to you in a bit all right quick recap just to add a few more points to the day um, one of the things uh, was my water issue. Uh, you've probably already seen that, but, um, need to plan ahead better on, uh, the water issue. I've never shown up to the water source dry and I was the last mile I had to hike dry. So that's not a good thing because you could get the water source and it not be a viable water source. So got to think ahead a little more looking at the water sources the rest of the time. I'll be doing that, but it looks like I that was kind of an extended um, extended length of, of trail there where there wasn't good water sources. Um, there really wasn't any even marked water sources for a 12 mile section in there. So uh, I talked to my shuttle driver, Honey Bun, um, and he said that, you know, they've had some rain up here lately, so spring should have been recharged, but I've come across several things that were marked on far out as water sources and they ain't um but um i'm sitting pretty now water and hopefully that'll work out for the rest of tomorrow i'm here at the shelter by myself doesn't look like anybody's going to show up because it's getting kind of late i got here about an hour hour and a half earlier than i set up camp um last night so i had set up camp with a flashlight last night so that's a good thing i'll i'll be able to get in at a respectable hiker midnight um tonight and uh and i didn't get out of camp till nine this morning uh usually i'm out earlier but man the sunrise was just so killer so i kind of tarried just a little bit to see that and and let the some of the stuff dry out uh, I am sleeping in the shelter. I don't typically do that, but there's not really a decent uh, tent sites here. So, um, and then I noticed on gut hooks, now it was in 2021, a year ago, but a little disturbing in that there was a, a mountain lion slash cougar in the area. I'm not kidding you. Uh, the four-legged kind. 
And um, so there's some woman uh, or some person indicated that they heard it screaming and thought it was a person and went down the trail and had an encounter with it. So I was hoping somebody'd be here with that. I'm not much into waking up uh, to being clawed, but uh, hopefully it would get off some type of warning. Um, I did see some uh, a deer here right before the shelter when I came in, so maybe that's a good sign they wouldn't be in an area where there was known to habitat for cougar. So anyway, that'll pretty much wrap it up uh, as I'm getting ready to eat here, and then I'll, uh, I got stuff drying out on the limbs, and I will uh, get everything put up inside and hung up, and... Um, and then we'll call that a night. Okay. All right. We will see y'all in the morning for day number three. And that should be the last day we should be coming out to the truck. All right. Y'all have a good evening. And we'll see you on the next video.